I'm going to take just a couple of minutes and outline what I think is a wake-up call for everyone that may be in the business to rent property, have signed contracts, and I want to ask everyone to deep to take a deep dive into into their heart and their soul about are you really running your business ethically and morally as well as you can? And here's what occurred. Stole Mobile Home Park, signed a contract with a towing company called Strapped Towing Recovery. And the purpose was so that Stoll could keep the Mobile Home Park clean. For those of you who may not be familiar with running mobile home parks, it's easy to collect derelict vehicles, and as a result of that, people don't want to live there. So Stoll was being responsible when they signed a contract. But you can have a contract, and then you can have a contract. So on May the 15th and 16th, our contract company called and called up and showed up at, and began searching the community for any vehicle that was in violation of the ordinance. Well, they made a tow on the 16th. It's interesting they showed up late in the evening and they towed a Suzuki from the carport. Now understand these folks had their vehicle in their carport, backed in, but it did not have a tag on the vehicle. So the employees of strapped towing were actually going not only through the park, but walking up in people's carports and looking to see if the vehicle had a tag on it. The vehicle was operational and running. It was a, this particular vehicle was a Suzuki and strapped, backed up and starts to tow the vehicle out of the parking lot. The owners come out and say, hey, don't tow our vehicle away and they go, you sign a contract to live here. The contract says that you have to have a valid registration. They tried to bring a tag out. They asked if they could get their car back. The owner of the company and the tow truck driver, Michael Den, refused to let them have their vehicle. And he towed it away despite the consternation and request by the owners. So away the vehicle went at about 11.30 at night. So the next day on the 17th, the afternoon of the 17th, two families go to this tow company in Mulberry, Florida to retrieve their vehicles. And there's another disturbance. Well, it starts out rather peaceful when they tell the employee that's there, we want our vehicle. One of them paid like $265, the other paid like $300. How there was two different prices of toes from the same place, we don't know. The storage yard was more than 10 miles away, more than 10 miles away from the tow location. That is a violation of law. So anyway, they, they paid, and we'll talk about Juan for a minute. Juan, Muriel, and that group paid to get the vehicle back. But the vehicle was in the back of the storage lot, and the battery was dead. Now, according to them, the battery worked. The vehicle ran when it was towed away, but now the battery's dead. So the employee 
calls Michael Den and Elisa Den, who are at this particular time in Barto eating dinner, and said, hey, these folks want their vehicle back. They've paid the price. And they go, well, we're eating dinner. We'll be there in a little while. So they finished eating in Barto, and then they drove all the way back to Mulberry. And an argument ensued because Michael now wants to charge them another fee to hook up to their car in the back of the tow yard and tow it out front. So an argument ensues. Subsequent to the argument, Juan, who has a 14-year-old young lady in the car, drives the vehicle that he arrives in down to the corner, drops off a 14-year-old girl, spins around in the car, charges back where there are people are arguing in the road, and runs into Michael Den, swerves and hits Michael Den's brother, injuring him. Then he spins the car around, jumps out of the vehicle. Michael Den approaches him, shoots him, and kills him. Of course, the sheriff's office is notified. We respond. Michael Den says, I'm standing my ground, I'm standing my ground. And we go, what do you mean you're standing your ground? This, the, the victim, Juan, certainly, Juan Muriel, certainly would have been arrested had you simply called the sheriff's office for charging back in the vehicle and hitting your brother. But when the car spins to a stop, and Juan gets out of the vehicle without a firearm, and you shoot him ultimately in the back of the head and kill him. As he's walking clearly with nothing in his hands, posing no immediate threat, that's not stand your ground. So he was arrested. That caused our detectives, both our homicide detectives who also got our Northwest detective, Northwest District detectives involved going, what happened? What was the genesis of this problem? Well, it was an over-aggressive tow company. That's where it started. We also learned that in addition to towing this car that by the contract they signed to live there was technically a legitimate tow, but it wasn't the spirit of the intent of the process. The, the spirit of the rule simply is that you don't want derelict vehicles collecting in the mobile home park. But this guy and his team that was there had flashlights walking up underneath people's carport to see what they could see and found this one without a tag on it and towed it away. Well, not only did they tow that one, we found where they've towed 19. They towed this vehicle, totally separate incident. Do you know why they towed that vehicle? They said it was parked on the grass. And there is an authorization by Stoll Mobile Home Park if you want to park a second vehicle, if you put down a gravel area, then that's permissible. Well, they parked on the gravel area that they created that was allowed by Stoll Mobile Home Park, and still this tow firm towed their vehicle away. They said, well, there was grass growing up through the gravel, so they had parked on the grass. That's nasty. I just, like in Polk County vernacular, that just ain't right. So we got to investigating, 
and our detectives did a remarkable job. There is a law that says that a tow truck has to have specific markings on the side. Name, address, DOT numbers, newsflash. This didn't have any markings on the side. Further investigation revealed that, yes, some toes were technically contractually appropriate, but then look how the people got treated when they came there and paid their $265 and $300. That's what caused this entire event to deteriorate into what was ultimately a shooting and us charging Michael with second degree murder. Well, guess what? Yesterday was the next phase of an investigation by our property crimes detectives when we arrested Elisa Den and Michael Den, who owns Strapped Transport Towing and Recovery Company, with 19 counts of towing outside of a 10-mile radius. That's a third-degree felony. Elisa was charged with two counts of improperly marked tow vehicle. Michael was charged with a 19 counts plus two counts. Plus, he was charged, it's a felony, because the state law says, hey, if in the process of the tow, the people want their vehicle back, you have to tell them and offer a reduced fee of no more than half price to let them have the car back. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. Had Michael Den, even though he was technically correct, even though he was ethically, ethically and morally bankrupt when he towed that vehicle from out from under the garage or the car, carport, had he followed the law and given them the opportunity to pay half the fee that night, that murder the next day never would have occurred. His brother never would have been hit. And when they came to get the car and paid the money, and he and his wife showed up mad and wanted to charge him another fee for bringing the car back from the back of the lot, and how did the battery get dead overnight? I'm suspicious. Who knows how that occurred? So we arrested them. And you know what? We towed the tow truck that Elisa was driving. So after we towed the tow truck, we put Elisa in the back of a patrol car and strapped her in and put her in the county jail. You see, she was driving the tow truck this way. And then we put it on the back of another tow truck and towed it this way. And then we put her in jail. Well, we didn't put Michael Den in jail because he's already in jail for second degree murder. So we went down and added on a lot of other felony charges. So while I understand Stoll has a responsibility to keep the park neat and tidy so that people will want to live there and certainly that live there have the right to live in a nice clean environment. This is an example where I don't think Stoll did its due diligence and hired what I consider a fly-by-night towing company that clearly unequivocally didn't follow the law and took advantage of hard-working poor people just trying to make ends meet. 
we talked to another lady. We talked to another lady who had $260 charge. That lady had two part-time jobs. She had to take an Uber, pay an Uber $40 to take her down to recover her vehicle. She lost a day's wages. The two part-time jobs together only paid her $80 a day. So it took her, what, three or four days wages just to get her car back. That is wrong. That is so wrong. That is wrong on every level. I don't know how people who take advantage of hardworking poor people trying to make ends meet sleep at night. But they're sleeping in the county jail at night. Or maybe they're not sleeping. But occasionally, just occasionally, we arrest people and it warms our heart to see them go to jail. My heart is warmed that we lock these people up, that we're taking advantage of poor, hardworking folks just trying to get along in life. Here's the message. You better not do that because my detectives are not happy about it. I'm not happy about it, and we're going to be looking for the unethical people that are taking advantage of the hardworking, poor people just trying to get along in life. So, if you don't want your tow truck towed away, on the back of another tow truck. If you don't want to go to the county jail, you better ensure that you comply with all the rules, all the county ordinances, and the state law. And oh, by the way, we have seized this white tow truck, and we plan to forfeit it. And once it's successfully forfeited, We'll put the appropriate Polk County Sheriff's Office markings on it and use it for our purposes at our fleet center. So we'll save the taxpayers money while teaching these folks a lesson. So Juan would be alive today. Had Michael Den just followed the law. There never would have been a confrontation in Mulberry at the tow yard. And after they paid the fee, they were going to take one last shot at taking advantage of hardworking folks by saying, you want your car out now? You got to pay us to tow it from the back of the lot. That's when the event totally deteriorated. Are there any questions? I have seen the video, and it is currently in active litigation in the courts because, quite frankly, I can say this. When we were doing our investigation and served our search warrant that night, that video that has mysteriously appeared wasn't there. So there's an active criminal investigation ongoing about where that vi where that video was, and there's active litigation in the court, so it would be inappropriate for me to comment any further on that. But let me tell you clearly and unequivocally, we are all over that like a cheap J.C. Penny suit. That's what they pay that defense attorney for, to throw all this nasty in the air. Well, I ask that defense attorney to hearken back 
that had his client not murdered Juan, had his client followed the law that night, none of this would have happened. That's the truth. So that attorney can throw all that baloney out there he wants. Get your fees. Get them up front. Because we're going to lock them all up for violating the law. Sheriff, um, a lot of people just feel helpless whenever their car gets towed and they basically have to do whatever, like they have to pay whatever the tow company says they do. Uh, what can people do whenever they feel helpless like that or they feel like they're being scammed? Absolutely. First and foremost, the overwhelming majority of tow co companies do it exactly by the rule. They're ethical, they're moral, they understand that people are really in a really tough situation because their car is broken down. They legitimately, inappropriately parked in the wrong place, and, and the tow company is doing what's right. That's not the ones we hear about. This is the ones we hear about, the ones that tow out of your carport, the ones that take flashlights and walk around at 11 o'clock at night seeing if you got a tag on your vehicle, the ones that tow you off of a gravel parking space that's legit and they claim you're parking on the grass, that, that tow company gives all the others a bad name. But if you'll Google up, you can look at the county ordinances and the state law that says specifically how they have to operate. And if you find that you have been abused, if it's civil, there's civil remedies, and you can go to court with that, either yourself or there's, there are lawyers for legal aid that will assist, or if it's criminal, we'll put them in jail. But at the end of the day, we understand that when you run a mobile home park, you can't allow derelict pieces of crap cars to collect because the, the people who live there don't want to weave around that kind of stuff. You've got to keep a clean, nice environment in your mobile home park. But you ethically and morally and legally have the obligation to employ the right tow company doing the job the right way and that's not taking flashlights and meandering through the park at 10 11 o'clock at night that's just wrong it's just wrong now stole has reimbursed some of the people because when it's come to their attention they figured out that strapped towing inappropriately seized some vehicles. But this investigation is still underway. We haven't found all of the victims yet. We want to talk to them because we want to bring more criminal charges. And if there's other mobile homes or businesses that have these fly-by-night people violating the rules, you ought to clean your act up before we get to you, or you too will get strapped in the back of a patrol car and towed to the county jail. It was late on the night of 15th and the 16th and then the night of the 16th so it actually it, it was it's a lot of vehicles and that included the one towed off of the gravel and the one they towed from underneath the the carport this is horrendous conduct you don't treat your fellow man or woman like that you just don't do that. 
not in Polk County, not in our community. We respect each other. If you violate the rule, you violate the rule. If you violate the law, you violate the law. We get that. But you don't, you do not take advantage of people when they're down and out. You don't take advantage of people when they're not down and out. You treat people with respect. How would you want to be treated? And that entails following the law when you're doing your toes and recoveries and that sort of thing. Any other questions? People beware. Don't take advantage of these hardworking folks, these hardworking poor folks, these hardworking people that don't have much and think they don't have an ally. They got an ally in my deputies and detectives. You violate the law, we're going to put you in jail. Guaranteed. Have a good day.